Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Amazing Grace Community Church broadcast right here. We're in Hickory tonight on uh, 1406 First Avenue Southwest. We have uh, the three churches, as you'll see our symbol there. Uh, you know, we're, we're having a website now, and, and we're getting ready. We're live streaming. We're going to be live streaming soon, and you can pick us up at www warehousechurches.com and man we want to want you to join us and maybe join us at home there and and you can have church with us at home but listen so many people are getting healed a young lady got healed with an ear uh, they said her nerve to her ear was dead and uh, the Lord moved in you know it's not by might nor by power but it's by my spirit now if the Spirit was good enough for Jesus, you know, He was God, and He laid aside His deity and come down here as a man, and then when the Spirit descended on Him, He started doing the miracles because the Spirit is what does the miracles. Hallelujah. And the Spirit's what heals people. We've got a lot of people healed with headaches. A lot of people uh, heal with back trouble a lot of people heal with knees swollen up man god is moving so much and we're going to start having a special healing service you know uh uh it'll be saturday and sunday nights when we get started over at brookford we got another church over at brookford we're trying to get ready man things are just happening and we want to tell you about a special event that's coming here uh, you know, the Pathfinders will be with us the 27th of this month. So I want you to come out and be with us. And we'll ask Mary to read the prayer request at this time. I want you to pray for Donald Sutton. He's had heart problems, been in and out of the hospital. We know the Lord's got his hand on him, and he's going to get a healing. I want you to pray for Shirley. God knows the reason why. Uh, also, this is a special request that we pray for a gentleman by the name of Kevin. He has uh, ulcers in his stomach, and he's had surgery and may have to have more. But I think the thing that's really bothering him is his son has gotten out of prison. He's been in there several times. And each time he gets right down to the time when he'll be off of probation and something happens. So let's pray. His time will be up on Thursday of this week for his probation to go off. So let's pray that nothing happens and he stays clear and we put salvation in his soul. The Lord can do anything. He can work miracles. And we're expecting one there. Also a healing for Calvin. Uh, also want to pray for Robert Reese. He's had a lot of unfortunate circumstances trying to raise a little boy by himself. And we know that's a hard job. So we want to pray for strength for Robert to be able to cope with all this, to work at public work, and to work at home with the little boy. He's doing great so far. Uh, we have uh, a lot of people that's had uh, praise reports coming in. Gene Cuthrell, who we prayed for last week, had stents put in his heart. Gene is out of the hospital doing fine. So praise the Lord for that. Also, we want to pray for Mary Wright. She's also out of the hospital. Jerry Robinson who we prayed for that had fluid over the heart and had cancer three times. Jerry's back to work, driving a tractor trailer. So thank you, Lord, for that. Yes. Um, just study to show yourself approved at all times and pray to the Lord. He's the best friend you have. Just ask and sit back and let him do the work. Help will be on its way, and you'll see results. Now, he answers in his time, not your time sometimes. And he answers the correct way, not the way we always ask for it. But believe in him and trust in him, and everything will be fine. Uh, also, we want to pray for a young lady at the hospital by the name of Jessica. She's had five tumors. Uh, had half of her liver removed and several other organs. Now they found another tumor. And we want to pray real hard for her. She's a lovely lady, helps other people. And we know God's got his hand on her. Also, I want you to pray for Misty and David. They're joining their two families together to make one, and they bought them a new lovely home. So let's pray that everything goes right from here on out. And if the pastor will put his hand on there, we'll pray for them. 
Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we know it's not your will that any should perish. Oh, but we all should have that eternal life. God, it's not your will that they be sick, God. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, right now for delivering them, for bringing them out of this place of, uh, of despair, God. I thank you, Lord Jesus. You said by your stripes that they were all healed right now in the name of Jesus. And we stand on your word. Lord, we bind the devil, we bind sickness in the name of Jesus, and we send the Spirit of God to deliver them and set them free. In Jesus' name we pray, be healed. Amen. 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 Praise God. God is so good to us, isn't He? He's worthy of all the praise. And listen, a lot of times sickness comes from the devil, you know, because the devil is an oppressor, isn't he? He will oppress you, and, and a lot of times sickness comes from him. And the way to, to get around this sometimes, uh, or all the time, is through Christ. Christ is our strength. He's our strong tower that we run into. And, and you know, if you know the Bible, if you will get a hold of the Bible and read the Word of God, then you'll have victory. Man, victory like you won't believe in Matthew 4 and 4, Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Every word. Now listen, it, it makes a difference what you say. What you say makes a difference because it sets the course of life for you. What your words do. And it, it's, it, it makes a difference when you are meditating on the Word of God uh, and speaking it over your life, I'm telling you right now, God will uh, move and His Word will produce it. And I said a while ago, the Spirit is what does the work. You know, Jesus was a Word made flesh, but the Spirit, when he, ste when he stepped out and said, let there be light, the Spirit moved over the earth. You know, and that Spirit hovered over the earth and separated the water from the land. Man, I'm telling you, that's exciting. I want Him to hover over me. How about you, Miss Mary? Praise God, the Spirit of God. Man, when He hovers over you, He will change your life. And you see, the Word is spirit and life. And when you, uh, we got to live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, not just uh, half of the words, but all the words. Hallelujah. Uh, and again in John 6, 63, Jesus said, The word that I speak unto you, the words, they are spirit and they are life. Hallelujah. So, if you want spirit and life, go to the Bible. Go read the word of God. That is spirit and life. And man, when you start uh, speaking, reading the word of God, I'm telling you right now, it will change your life. And uh, according to Hebrews 4 and 12, the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even uh, to the dividing asunder the soul and the spirit and of the joint and mire, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Man, just think about that tonight. The Word of God is a discerner or the Spirit of God is a discerner of your thoughts and the intents of your heart. And man, when you, uh, God knows everything you think. He, you know, you can't hide it from Him. You might hide it from some people, but you'll never hide it from God because He, the Spirit of God, is a discerner of thoughts and uh, the intents of the heart. And in John 8 and 31, Jesus said to those Jews who believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples. So we have to continue. Salvation is not a one-day thing. You know, a lot of people said, I got saved 20 years ago. That's all I need. Hey, they're missing the best part. Fellowship with God every day. Salvation is in our lives every day, man. 
every day. And we got to continue in the Word if we're going to be the disciples of God. This went out up here. Uh, and we got to continue in the Word of God so that, that we will know all the secrets of God. Has God ever told you some secrets? He has, hasn't he? He sure has. And man, when God tells you some secrets, one of them is Christ in us, the hope of glory. And you know, the love of God. Man, I'm telling you right now, we didn't know what love was until Christ come into our life. What a Savior He is. What a God that we are serving. He's a powerful God. In Psalms 1, uh, 1 through 3 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But he delights; his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the river of water that brings forth his fruit. In his season, his leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Man, I like that right there. Whatsoever he does. So this program is going to prosper, isn't it? Because God said it. Hallelujah. Yes. God said it, and this program is going to prosper. He said, whatsoever you do. We're meditating. Go ahead, Mary. Okay. Well, a lot of people have changed the Bible in different ways. We don't need to change the King James Bible. We need to let the Bible change us. Amen. And when we do, it's going to be a wonderful life out there for all of us. Just, Amen. Just stay in your prayer closets. Pray for everybody. Learn to love everybody. And God will be with you. You'll prosper. You'll be happy. Amen. That's exactly right. Miss Mary is exactly right. Let the Bible change you. Let, let Jesus in your heart. You know, if you don't know him tonight, tonight would be a good time to get to know him. Uh, and the way to get familiar with God is get familiar with the books. You know, the, the Bible. Get familiar with that. You know, and, and God will come in. The Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man opens that door... And here's my voice. I will come in and sup with him. And he, uh, you know, uh, I'll come in. If any man hears his voice, he will open the door and come in and sup with him and bring salvation. Man, what a Savior he is. What an awesome God. And, and God wants us to walk in the light while it's day. Right now it's day. And we've got to know the wisdom of God if we're going to make it. Because uh, without the wisdom of God, then we really don't know anything. Man's wisdom is nothing. Even the smartest professor in the world is nothing compared to God's wisdom. Hallelujah. And man, I'd rather have God's wisdom than, than all the education in the world. Education is good, and I, I like godly education. Man. And, and I like to, uh, you know, it's good, but I'd rather have God's rather than man's. Hallelujah. And, and without this, you'll never, ever accomplish God's plan for your life. And I see we have just a few more seconds here, and we're going to take a break. Uh, so uh, let us take a break right now, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about some demon power. I want to take this time to tell you about a special event that's happening here uh, August the 27th at 6 o'clock. This is the Warehouse Church, 1406 First Avenue Southwest in Hickory. The Pathfinders is going to be with us from Charlotte, North Carolina. They are some great gospel singers. And if you miss this event, then you're going to miss a blessing and want everybody to be here early and get a seat because uh, the Pathfinders are fantastic. They're on Joy FM 88.1. Come and be with us that night. I know that you'll get a blessing. Praise God. It's good to have you be back with you once again. You know, 
God is so good. And listen, sickness is something we're learning about. People, a lot of times, if you have sickness, you want to get around somebody who has got, uh, you know, been known as being able to heal people, you know, uh, a preacher that's got that anointing or has got that uh, gift in his life, you know, uh, will deliver people. And that's uh, who you want to be around if you're sick, you know, and that's why God has sort of given us this ministry. You know, uh, it's not us that does it, but it's the gift that glorifies God. You know, when somebody gets healed, God gets glorified because it's his gift anyway. He gives it to everybody. You know, the Bible says that miracles and signs and wonders will follow them that believe. You know, and God wants to touch your life and he wants to meet your needs. Sometimes demons uh, cause sickness in our lives. As a matter of fact, all the time, you know. Uh, but some people are sick just for God to get the glory. You know, and we don't know what's what until God reveals it. You know, and I want my wife Jill to read to you uh, about this demon power. Now, this demon power, they have got a force, buddy, and they are powerful. If you don't have the Word of God, if you don't have the anointing of God, you better not mess with them because uh, it takes the anointing power of God. Sometimes you have to fast. But read to us. This is my wife, Jill. Uh, it's, it's nice to be in your living rooms this afternoon. Or uh, I want to say this right before Pastor. I didn't know what he was going to speak on tonight. But all day in my heart, is there not a cause? You know, little David there, he said, is there not a cause in Israel when the Goliath was uh, uh, coming against and defying God? And, and that's what the enemy, the demons, are defying God. He's defying the God of healing. He's defying of God of... Uh, prosperities. Uh, he's to find our salvation, our healing, and our deliverance. But we know there is a God who sits upon the throne. His Amen. name's Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And whatever is done, uh, God be the glory. Amen. Uh, and that's what our ministry is, is, is longing to see the manifestation of the Lord in healing, setting the captive free, and salvation of the soul, and seeing people broken, being healed in the right mind. And and, and that's done part of our ministry here. So if you're in this area, uh, if not, watch us over the web. But this is why we congregate. This is why we put our whole energy into it. This is why we have these churches, is to long to see people have a change. It's nothing for us, but it's all to be the glory of God. So Pastor, my husband, want me to read some about the demons to understand how they work. Demons are spirit beings who have personalities and intelligence as members of Satan's kingdom and as enemies of God and humans. They're evil, malicious, organized with different levels of rank and delegate authority under Satan. Demons are powers behind idol gods so that worshiping false gods is essential to worshiping demons. New Testament presents an estranged from God and seized by Satan. Uh, demons are within the heresy of rules of this age. Christians must wage continual warfare with them. Demons can, and often do, live in bodies of unbelievers and use their voices to talk. They enslave such individuals and influence them toward evil, immorality, and destructions. Demons can cause physical illnesses, Pastor was talking about, to the human body. Although not all sickness and disease are results of evil spirits, those involved in spiritualism and magic or sorcery are dealing with evil spirits. This can easily lead to demonic bondage. Evil spirits will especially active, be active in the last days. And I don't know about y'all, but this to me is the last days. Just listen to your news out there. Especially active in the last days of this age, promoting occult immorality, Violence, cruelty, they will, assault God, they will assault God's word and sound doctrine. Ultimately, ultimately outpouring of demon activity will be in Antichrist and his followers. So we're living in that age, folks. There is a cause in the land, amen, to be active in prayer and warfare. We don't, I don't go out here with an AK-47 or <laughs> an atomic bomb, but we do our praying. That's how we defeat the enemies, through prayer 
and seek it and fast if need be to see people's lives changed. Amen. So uh, I'll hand it back over to Pastor. I'm amazed. You know, I went out uh, Monday night and we went out to a young man's house and I'm amazed that there was a whole uh, porch full of people. And, and these people, uh, they did not want to hear the Word of God at all. They did not, uh, you know, uh, they were homeless around there. They were people that were just existing, you know. Uh, they smoked their marijuana. They had food. You know, uh, the government is good and helping people is good, but some people, they use it to the wrong advantage, you know. Uh, money is just enough to get them some drugs and just enough, uh, you know, to get them something to eat and all of them stay together in a house, you know, uh, so they can do exactly what. Now, uh, people today, young people, a lot of young people out here don't want to take responsibility. They don't want to have any responsibility of houses and land. They just want to exist and and you see, that is a trick of the devil. The devil wants to keep them in that kind of situation. As long as he can keep them happy on their way to hell, and, and they think everything is all right as long as they got food and they got their drugs and they got a place to sleep. But listen, it's not all right because hell is real. And it's going to, one of these days, it's going to... Uh, they're going to wake up and find their place if they don't get saved in the wrong place. And you see, the devil, he is his influence. And man, you talk, you start witnessing to somebody that's got a devil. Hey, they, they got intelligence, buddy. They will uh, give you all kind of smart answers, you know. Uh, but listen, uh, most of them know the Bible. You know, the devil knows the Bible, but they can't live it because uh, they uh, don't have the power. It takes the grace of God to live it. And listen, so many people need deliverance. And, and they need deliverance right here at 1406 That's First right, Avenue man. Street. You know, this is where at 6 o'clock we come together with music and, and we're going to start praying for the, for the sick on Saturdays at 6 o'clock, you know. And when we get to Brookford Church, that is Amazing Grace Life Center. We're going to call that Amazing Grace Life Center. On Sunday nights, we're going to start praying for the sick. If you have a testimony where God has delivered you and you want to put it on television, listen, God's at work. And man, we got the biggest field. He said to look on the fields for they are white. Right now, it's not in the future, it's right today. Hallelujah. Listen, don't let the devil deceive you. So many people, you know, uh, we're going to the prison. We go every third Saturday night, Jill and uh, uh, the church does. And we, uh, those guys down at that prison, man, they get into the Lord. They really get into God, you know. Uh, but the devil has got them there, but it's going to take God to get them out of that place. And, and he is. He's delivering them out. And when they get in the place where they can, uh, you know, handle things, God will get them out of that place. Man, I'm telling you right now. But listen, don't be bound up. You know, when we pray for a lot of people, uh, when fluid starts coming out of your nose or your mouth, man, that's the devil coming out, you know. Uh, and God wants you to know that He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be in health. He don't want people around here homeless. He don't want people around here that, that won't give anything to the community. But they're taken. The devil takes everything that he can, you know. And we want people who can work and add to the country, you know. We can teach them how. We can teach them how to up poster. We can teach them, you know, the skills that they need, but they got to want to do that. And you see, that's why we're here, to help people, to teach them, you know, uh, what they need. And, and I want to see people get good jobs, not just a job to get them by, but good jobs. And, man, 
The devil is hindered and he's got so many people blinded because they're so in to everything they're doing, you know. Uh, but listen, there's going to be a day. God says he gives everybody a chance to repent. There's a point in time. Today is a day of salvation. And listen, if you're hurting out there, we want to pray for you. We want to pray for you if you don't know him as your Savior. If you're letting the devil mess your life up, all you got to do is reject it. Now, I went to Israel, and we were at the place that was called the closest to hell, where the pigs run off into the ocean there. And Jesus stood right there, and he said, uh, the gates of hell will not prevail against his church, the rock. You know, and he told Peter that. He said, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We want to pray for you right now. We've got a couple more minutes. But if you would, just lift up your hand and, and to a point of contact. If you're hurting out there tonight and say, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I ask that you give me grace. God, I ask that you turn this around. I bind this sickness I do not want it. I disallow it right now in the name of Jesus. I command that pain to go. We break every assignment of the enemy right now in the people's lives. That's watching. If you're out of church, I break that assignment of the devil to keep you out of church. Lord, we loose them right now from sickness, from, uh, from hurting God, from pain God right now. And let them come to church. And Lord, uh, all they got to do is say, Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of all my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He died and rose the third day for my justification, and I receive it right now. Forgive me of all my sins. That's all you got to do in Jesus' name. And man, when you start praying like that, Jesus will start coming in your life. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Man, we got to live by every word. I want to thank Jill for being with us and Mary to, tonight. Brother Tom is on vacation. And don't forget now the singing here the 27th of August. Pathfinders will be here from Charlotte, North Carolina. Be at 6 o'clock. I want you to come at 11 o'clock and be, uh, have church with us here, 1406 First Avenue Southwest on Sunday morning, and I guarantee you, you'll like it.